Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Well, earlier, I did a little spankity spank, and I know that. But I want to share with you how understanding God is when he sees you really trying, but you're struggling and you're tripping over your own two feet. The can't help it seems to have you from head to toe. And you're not trying to live a life of sin. You're not bent on mischief. You don't enjoy failing and sinning and getting caught up. You don't enjoy it. But you find yourself there anyway. There's a song that says Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Now, he knows that your strength is weak. He knows that you came up uh, lacking. He knows what your beginnings were like. He knows who molested you, who, who raped you, who messed with you. He knows who messed over you, when it happened, how it happened, how deeply it cut how deeply it hurt. He knows the amount of damage it done it did to you. He knows all of that. Now, there's another scripture. I'm trying to, to lay a foundation here so you get it. There's a scripture that says, to whom much is given, much is required. You flip that over. Flip that pancake over and look on the other side. You know what it'll say? To whom little has been given, little is required. Not an excuse. It's a statement of understanding. God knows what has happened to you. First of all, God loves you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And if people messed over you, that's on them, not on God. But I tell you what is on God. His ability to heal you and deliver. He can undo, undo all that damage. You're looking at a fruit of his help right here. So when you realize that, understand that healing goes through a certain process. And God's never in a hurry. So when you start to wonder, well, how come I'm not here by now? How come I'm not there by now? Remember, Rome was not built in one day. Neither was the world. Now, think about this. Years ago, this is one of my analogies. Years ago, I had twisted my ankle. When I twisted my ankle, it twisted so bad that it the tendon popped a little chip of the bone. I didn't have a fracture at all. Just a little pop. But that thing was so painful, I didn't put my foot down for a week. I mean, I hopped everywhere I had to go, and that was painful. So finally, I went in, and I had gone to one hospital. They sent me home with a pair of crutches and an ice pack. I went to the other one, and they took an x-ray immediately. When they took the x-ray, now my foot was literally black and blue all around the ankle, and it was swollen horribly. They told me, that I didn't have a fracture, but a bone chipped, just a little bone chip. So they were going to put a cast on my foot. That cast was supposed to stay on my, on my ankle. It went from my foot all the way up to, to mid calf. I was supposed to keep that on. I believe if my memory serves me correctly around three or four weeks, something like that. I left it on an extra seven or eight days. You know why? It hurt so badly. 
before they put that cast on, I knew it was going to hurt again when I put my foot on the ground and applied weight to it. And I got a lot of weight. <clears throat> so, anyway, they, the doctor told me, he said, I hope you didn't wait too long. I mean, I was hopping around on that cast, boy, no pay, no nothing, no crutches. I was stepping. Well, that doctor took the, the uh, cast off and had me ease my weight on that leg. You know what he said? It's healed now. But you have to put your weight on it in order for your muscles not to atrophy. It's going to hurt, but that's part of the healing process. You you know the healing's about done, but you got to do the rest now. You got to get you got to start applying weight on it. My point in saying that is it took a year and a half of forcing it in front of of hot tub jets and I mean I was like oh, oh that thing hurts so bad I, but I had to force that and the heat I knew would force the blood to that area which makes it heal quick, more quickly the pain it was healed but the pain did not fully go away for a year and a half That was the end of my limping after around a year and a half. I've never had any complications from it since. I don't care if it rains. I don't care if it sleets, snows, if it's sunny, whatever. I don't have problems with that ankle at all. It fully healed. But here's the issue. The residual effects of the damage that was done went on for a year and a half. Remember that? When you have been so deeply damaged, so psychologically scarred, so emotionally wounded and bruised, so broken, no matter what God is doing in you, the residual effects, you've got to count yourself healed, but the residual effects may go on for one year, two years, three years. It may go on a while. So you have to trust that God, he who has begun a good work in you, will complete it. He who began a good work in you. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Will be faithful to complete it in you. So when you how can I say this? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lord. This reminds me of a conversation I had yesterday. If you have a child who is retarded. Ah, uh, help me not get emotional. And that child is two or three. And you can't get that child to learn how to tie a shoelace and he gets to be four or five six years old and you are still trying to teach that child how to tie his shoelace are you going to whoop his behind because he can't get it no because you know there is a short circuit up here that limits his ability to grasp and to apply. So for somebody that only takes a week to learn something, it may take this child 
a decade. God understands that some of your wounds are so deep. It may take you a decade. Because you are emotionally, developmentally disabled. Because someone did damage to you. And your growth pattern has been retarded. Has been slowed down. Has been hindered. Has been delayed. Not denied. And then one day, what happens? The little boy comes in. He says, look, mommy. At 12 years old, he tied his own shoelace. That's monumental. Not for a normal child, but for this child is monumental. You know why? He never stopped trying. He never gave up. He kept plugging at it. Because he wanted it that bad. And his parents never gave up on him. Now, imagine how much more God loves you. You are developmentally delayed. You have been slowed down. Your progress is extremely slow in certain areas of your life, as is mine. But I ain't going to tell what, problem, what part of my life that's in. My point to you is if a human parent can be that patient, if a worker can be that patient, a guardian can be that patient, how much more can God? And if God chooses to be that patient with you, you better be patient with yourself. And don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel because you blew it again. You didn't blow it celebrating like, oh, well, hey. No, you blew it and you're frustrated with yourself. That frustration is your indication that you have the seed of righteousness in your bosom. Because if you did not have that, you wouldn't give a rat's you know what. You'd do what you wanted to do when you wanted to do it. And you wouldn't give it a second thought and dare somebody to say something about it. Be encouraged. God knows the difference between a hypocrite and someone who has been badly, deeply damaged. He knows the difference. And if all you have left is a little cinder, a little glow at the end of a twig, that's been burned badly. God's not going to put that little light out. He's not going to put your light out. Because he's not abusive to damaged people. He doesn't beat someone who's been beaten and bruised all their lives. If you would just believe that God is pulling for you, you will never give up on yourself. God bless you. Be encouraged. If God be for you, who can be against you?